Hello everyone and welcome to the ninth mission of my Halo Wars Legendary Water Guide, The Flood. This mission is a fairly simple, uh, quick mission that can be challenging at times, but I'm going to show you uh, a strategy that can make this extremely easy for you, and then you'll just be able to plow right on through this mission and uh, move on to the next. Uh, there are two different strategies you can employ on this mission. You can employ the Hornet strategy, which is covered in a different video, or you can employ the strategy that's going to be the focus of this video, which is the tank strategy. Now, the way we do the beginning part of the mission is uh, very similar to what we do in the Hornet strategy, is what we're going to do is we're going to get the reactor built first, and then we're going to start getting those supply pads built as well. Uh, we build the reactor first so we can get the heavy supply the supply pads to heavy supply pads uh, faster. Uh, as with uh, Forge and the Marines, we always want to make sure we're doing something, especially in the early game, because it is extraordinarily important to make sure that uh, we get our supplies early on. Is we basically send them around to go clear out the perimeter of our base so we can go grab those supplies faster. Now, uh, the main. Th Local there's a. I spend the early part of this mission in the Hornet strategy video talking about how important it is for. Uh, beginners or people who don't really have experience playing strategy games to make sure that they go into these missions and have like a set strategy going into them. Uh, the main uh, the main example I used for this uh, for this discussion or not discussion but main point was that when you go into a mission you want to evaluate the enemies that you're facing. For an example in this mission I'm facing the flood right? Now, if we don't know anything about the Flood, or if you've experienced the Flood before, and this, uh, if this isn't your first Halo game, then you know the Flood is a kind of like an anti-infantry, um, an anti-infantry enemy. They infect the Marines, and then they turn against you. So, basically, what you want to do is, knowing that fact, if you if you have prior knowledge, or if you just know exactly what the Flood do, is you don't really want to go an infantry. Uh, you don't want to basically go Marines against the Flood. It just wouldn't make sense, right? The importance of getting, like, to countering the Flood is more important than just doing whatever you want. If you want to beat this mission, especially on Legendary Difficulty, and really just try to get it done in part time without and keep a good combat efficiency, get that gold medal, then I would highly recommend utilizing either the Hornet strategy or the Tank strategy. Both methods pretty much guarantee you a gold medal if you can just uh, like if you follow the guide um, and what I do um, even if you mix it up a bit and try to do your own little path go grab that second base like even then um, you should be able to do it fairly fairly easily now the reason why I say it is important to go into a uh, a mission with like a set strategy of what you're gonna do is because if you don't know what you're gonna do and you're just kind of winging it on like as you play then you're not gonna have a good uh, that's that's not a strategy that's more like eh, I'm gonna do whatever I want and since we're trying to aim for a strategy it's best that we make sure that we go into a mission we go into a, a match or anything or any type of strategy and we focus on making sure that the um, we make sure that we focus on completing the mission, beating the enemy, and making sure that we we basically know what to do. If you don't have a plan set, then you're going to have a difficult time. If you deviate from that plan, which will have to happen uh, sometimes because sometimes, especially in multiplayer, the enemies are going to be very... Uh, like You don't really know what they're going to do, so you're going to have to adapt. So what you want to do is you always want to make sure that you plan ahead. In campaign, it's really easy. Like whatever you see me facing, you're gonna most likely face as well. So it, it's fairly easy for you to uh, like predict how your how your uh, experience is gonna be based on mine, because they're all scripted. But online, it's it's much more difficult. So I just wanted to kind of touch on that because in the Hornet video. I touched on it quite a bit and that was the entire like first third of the video was me just talking about that because as you see here I'm just using the Marines as I said I would and I'm just going around clearing the uh, clearing those flood spore pod things and grabbing the supplies out of them uh, but pretty much another thing I want to talk about is field armory stuff 
Um, you want to kind of balance out your field armory upgrades with uh, your units. You don't want to immediately just start getting all your field armory upgrades and then get your units. You want to make sure you balance them out. That's something that I struggled with initially when I started playing is like, you know what? I really want that super carpet bomb, so I'm not going to worry about any units until I get all my upgrades. And that's just a waste of time at that point. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, you make sure that you have a reason for it. And it's just going to make you that much better uh, or that much or make you that much faster or whatever. It's just supposed to be so you can um, do better. All right, so as you can see here, we got our first tank out. Um, tanks are awesome. Uh, there's no other way around it. I love tanks uh, in the shooters. I love tanks in Halo Wars. They're just extremely good. And I have a good, uh, deep appreciation for them. But in this mission, the moment you get that first tank, 10 minutes from that point on, uh, you're going to be able to finish this mission. It's a very, very quick mission and really just comes down to how fast you want to complete this mission. If you just say, like, you know, screw it. I'm not going to worry about any of the, the colonies. I'm just going to go straight for the for the proto-grave mine and kill, destroy that and then end the mission. You can totally do that. Um, I In this uh, walkthrough, I try to show you guys how to get the achievement. There's five colonies. All you have to do is uh, get them all dormant at the exact same time. If you do that, just one carpet bomb, I believe even a medium carpet bomb to the protograve mine, and boom, it's destroyed. And then you move on, mission success, and then awesome, you move on to mission number 10. But um, basically this mission uh, is kind of based on you. Like how fast do you want to beat this mission? Um, how successful do you want to be? Do you want to take a little bit of a... Do you want to pause and uh, he, like repair all your units like you should uh, more often, or would you just like to go in guns blazing? It, it, this mission gives you the freedom to do that, and um, sure, you should still maintain a strategy when you're doing this. But in this mission, like you have the time, you have everything going for you to make sure that you can definitely uh, just go out and just yeet a bunch of flood if you wanted to now in the hornet video i don't move out until i have all my hornets but in this video i started to move out with those three uh with just my three scorpions the reason being is is that three scorpions still does a lot of damage and plus i knew that fourth one wasn't gonna take long to get and then we'll be able to just go through and start uh, plowing the road so this is just me saying, like, you know what? I don't want to take forever. I know I'm on a time limit. I want to beat this before the part-timer. And I just kind of start getting ready to take down the stocks. Now, in this video, unlike the Hornet video, I actually don't get the skull. I don't get the black box. Uh, the reason being is, is that it's much easier to get the black box with, um, with the Hornet. And it's much easier. And I would say it is the only way to get to the skulls with the hornet so if you're planning on trying to get this like 100 percent completion i would highly recommend watching the hornet video but i mean if you really if you want to use the uh, scorpion wolverine strategy that's it, it works and it gets you that gold medal if that's all you're really going for if you're trying to 100 percent complete this mission uh, or this game go for it now all enemies are scripted to attack your base um that like like these guys are attacking your base they don't actually try to destroy your scorpions so don't uh don't feel like you like they're trying to counter you because those those uh enemy those flood forms actually are meant to counter your vehicles and infantry of course but i mean flood counter infantry period all right so initially when we start getting all of our uh vehicles going in we want to kind of be careful at first because there's a ton, and I mean a ton, of flood infection forms. And even though they don't infect you, they can still destroy your vehicle extremely quickly. And if you get stuck and they kind of just, like, hold you hostage, like they surround you, your vehicle is not going to be able to move. So it is extremely important for you to uh, be aware of that. So as usual, 
going in, uh, we want to target that flood cannon, uh, the flood spore cannon. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, I just keep calling it the flood spore cannon because, I mean, that's what it shoots, right? And that's what it is. Um, but basically is you want to kind of, if you want to destroy that first, but if you're taking a little too much damage, you want to micro away. That way you can, uh, uh, I guess, that way you don't have to just keep going back to your vehicle depot and getting a whole new scorpion when you could have just microed it back, repaired it later, and uh, sent it out again. So, moving on forward, we're going to just continue just getting through all this flood. Um, even I, There's a lot of mistakes when you kind of rewatch these and you say to yourself, like, you know what? I wish that I just targeted down the... Uh, the spore cannon first because that's the main threat right we, we want to make sure that we're focused on the main threat at all times the thing that's going to kill us the fastest so uh some like you always learn back like when you rewatch your gameplay or whenever you rewatch something you say like okay you know I, I wish i did something better than especially when you're trying to tell people like how to do it um and i'm i'm not the best at this uh, anyway but there's a lot of things that Hopefully that when you watch like some of my mistakes, you'll be able to like pick up on it and say like, you know what? Um, yeah, I I understand like he could have done this a little bit better, or um, I can incorporate that mistake and make sure I don't do it in my own uh, play style. So it, it, it's it's a matter of how you look at it. Like you could just say like, oh whatever, I lost a few seconds, uh, or you can just say like, oh, like you know what? maybe next time I'll just make sure that I focus that down a little bit more instead of worrying about those infection forms. Like, it, it really just comes down to perspective. But instead of talking about that, I'm going to just keep talking about destroying this colony. Because canister shell upgrade is here, and now everything's just going to get decimated. Bunch of flood infection forms. Uh, but once you destroy those colonies, uh, and that's the main focus of this video is destroying all the colonies yes. and destroying the proto grave mine, is once you weaken weak. one of the colonies, it weakens the proto grave mine at the very end. So again, it, it's you could either just go straight, uh, like go full on like blaze, of, full blaze of glory, and go straight to the proto grave mine, destroy it. You can you can do that strategy; it works out. Or you can go around and uh, destroy all the colonies and then go destroy the protograve mine with just one quick carpet bomb. I mean, either way, uh, both ways work. And just keep going towards our Spartans. Clearing the way a little bit more. So earlier on, I did say that we were going to get some Wolverines, and that's after we get the reinforcement upgrade. Now, the reason why we get those Wolverines, it just adds a little bit more support for our tanks. Because, again, tanks aren't very good against the air, right? But, so, we need to make sure we complement our forces. That way, um, they can do the maximum amount of good for each other. Like, the tank... Wolverines aren't good against ground forces, but they are excellent against air. Whereas, tanks are excellent against ground forces, but horrible against air. So, balance it out. Make sure that you kind of think about that stuff. All right, so with the Spartans, uh, some of the time I actually really enjoy keeping them out of vehicles, but in this case, they are so much more efficient in a tank. And this is a good point in time to start using that heal and repair function. That way I don't have to keep just wasting money on, uh, like, new tanks. So we're going to actually get another tank because... Eh, eight tanks and then four wolverines. That seems like a good compliment. Uh, but once our tank is, uh, once our tanks are fully healed, or you once the heal and repair goes away, it. we're gonna just clear out the rest of the flood uh, colonies, and then we'll go destroy that proto grave mine. All right, base looks kind of like that. Somehow that turret survived, but we're good. Canister shell for the win. Gonna keep going around. Keep killing those things. The big one is even weaker. Gonna get some Wolverines going. Um. 
local units. All units. Just keep going. The one of my favorite things about the Hornets is the fact that they have excellent mobility, whereas in with the tanks and infantry, you have to really hope that the AI pathing isn't completely uh, uh, brain dead. So <laughs> you kind of have to make sure you keep an eye on your forces a little bit more. Gonna back off from that colony because all we're trying to do is weaken the colonies. We don't want to waste time destroying all the flood, you know? There's no point in that. All right, moving on forward. So in this, I thought I was going to be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go grab that black box. But little known fact, if you send force to go grab the black box or, or ground unit to go grab the black box, uh, a ton of infection forms await you. So, and flood swarms. So uh, take my advice. If you're going to use this strategy and you really want the skull or black box, just keep like one hornet. That's all you really need to go grab the skull in the black box. Units. All units. Gonna keep on trudging around. This is where I kind of get really, really sloppy. Like, I let this colony uh, come back. Everything is just getting killed. Like, I'm letting this tank absolutely get demolished when I shouldn't be. I should be microing it away. Um... And then we're going to go over here destroy the other one. But as I said, you look back at your gameplay and say, like, okay, you know what? I, I'm i pretty sure everybody does that, right? You look back and say, like, oh, I wish I did this better. Just, like, make sure that you're keeping an eye on your micro. And um, we lost a tank right there. I knew that was going to happen immediately. We're going to focus down this last colony. Make sure that we get the carpet bomb off. Saw a bunch of red on my minimap. I'm like, okay, Forge, uh, looks like you're getting the heck out of here. I saw the colonies dormant. I'm like, okay, Forge, you're, you're kind of dead. Just keep, just try to get that black box before you die. Then I drop that carpet bomb and boom, mission complete. I mean, again, sloppy. It was extremely sloppy. And I know <laughs> to you guys, like, that looked, it, it might have looked really good. But again, uh, however you handle a situation is more important than. Uh, how you handle a situation is really, really important, but I digress. Uh, we still got that gold medal uh, under 17 minutes. I hope this guide was helpful for you. If it was, please leave a like down the script. Uh, please leave a like down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching.